the things that you all have already been looking over and reading through based on stories and anthropological and archaeological evidence is that humans uh, organize themselves based on the geometric shape of the circle. And one of the reasons they were doing so is because of what they were able to observe in the world. Everything worked in a circular fashion, at least in terms of what it meant for their survival. They understood the seasons. They were a cycle. They understood that night and day was a mini-cycle. They understood days of the week, or at least the cycle of weeks. They understood that certain plants would bloom at certain points in time. They, they learned that animals would migrate based on cycles. Uh, if they were on the coast, they could see the cycles of the tide or cycles of the moon. But basically, what we saw here through the observable world was the circle. The circle also applied to social structure, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And one of the key components of this social structure was this idea of matrilinealism. Many of these societies, perhaps not all, but many of these societies were matrilineal. Okay, so we're going to talk about what matrilineal means. First, we're going to distinguish it from matriarchal. Matriarchal alludes to the idea that women are in charge, they're bossing everybody around, they're almost like the queens of a society. That's not necessarily what matrilineal means. Matrilineal means that anything of any consequence is passed down in the female line in the family. And when I say consequence, what that could mean in the ancient world was resource distribution, titles, anything that was of import. I don't want to say private property because most of these societies didn't have a notion of private property. That'll come along a little bit later. But that's one of the big distinguishing marks with these matrilineal societies. So let's talk real quickly. How did they come into being? Well, again, it's the observable cycles that lead to the family unit being matrilineal. And the family unit is crucial because that's basically the unit that we all started within. We'll talk about larger units after we get through this. So the matrilineal unit of family was circular. Well, how was it circular? What do I mean by a circular family unit? Well, we know how babies are created. We have a man and a woman and when they love each other very much, some birds and bees will show up, or maybe we learned this in ninth grade health class, and a baby will be formed. All kidding aside, love was not necessarily always a crucial aspect. In fact, it rarely was. The reason we say this is because to ensure as much reproductive power as possible, women likely had many partners. It's a numbers game. It presented many more opportunities to create life and thus perpetuate society. Uh, so this more modern notion of marriage, not necessarily a thing. Marriage would actually limit the ability of society to remain strong. We also know that they wanted many more opportunities based on infant mortality rates, um, low survivability depending on elements, those types of things. Back to the point here, however, Matrilineal means that since it is the woman, through the observable world, and that one's quite obvious, that gave life and thus perpetuated society at the time, that anything, as I mentioned, of consequence would fall down the woman's line. Because oftentimes, she didn't even know who the father was. And that's okay. She did recognize, however, and societies recognized, that a male influence was crucial towards the development of this child. But since we don't necessarily know who he is, he, th this man's not necessarily going to have a say-so in this child's life. However, she will raise the child for male influence with a male relative of hers. Oftentimes, because of age, it would be a brother, maybe a cousin, and sometimes even a father. But her closest male relative would be the male influence in this child's life. So in this case, let's say... It's her brother. And he, of course, will be the one that impacts this child's life and teaches him, regardless of gender, him or her, um, crucial aspects of society. We don't want to feel too bad for this gentleman over here either, because it is highly likely that he has a female relative who also made a child. This one's happy. And he has an impact on this child's life. And of course, it's highly likely that he also created a child as well. 
and you can say slowly but surely we are going to create a very strong circular family unit. Now the other crucial aspect that we need to touch upon in this circular family unit and why it was matrilineal is that we have already observed that it is the women that are the life givers. So they have this crucial function. They are the life givers. We also, in those first few months or years, most likely years back then, were the crucial life sustainers for those children. They are the ones that literally feed them. So they are the ones that sustain life. And for these two purposes, we see how much these ancient cultures revered them. Right now, you can see on the screen, we've got ancient artifacts and examples where ancient peoples in what is now Germany, ancient peoples in what is now the Eastern Mediterranean, based on what we see, highly revered women. Because the artifacts left behind were almost all women figurines. The Venus you guys are looking at, the Cycladic statues, those exemplify what was highly revered in a lot of these ancient cultures. The ability to give life and the ability to sustain life. Based on gender division of labor, they are also the ones providing the most calories, literally feeding the family unit because of their function. They serve primarily as gatherers and, of course, small-scale farmers. Again, due to what was observable at the time, humans were able to figure out when things would be in bloom, when they could get various grasses, when they could get various fruits, when they could get various berries, again, depending on what part of the planet we're talking about. And it would be the women that were in charge of gathering. And of course, through observation, eventually, they were able to figure out, of course, how plants grow, and they'd be able to plant a few around the village or the clearing or the encampment. But this is important. This is the primary calorie intake for so many different people. What this meant was that the men, the men would be gone. We know they're serving as hunters. And they would be gone for weeks at a time. They would bring back, of course, meat, which was crucial to survival as well. But oftentimes it served more as a luxury. While the men are gone, again, weeks, months at a time, who's literally feeding society? It's the gatherers. It's the farmers. That doesn't mean that men don't serve a crucial purpose. As hunters, they're not just bringing home meat. They're the ones that are actually in contact with other societies, so they are literally representing this family or social unit. They are also the ones that may be setting up small-scale trade networks. And in times of conflict, because of their skill as hunters, they would be the ones handling conflict with other groups. Um, and so these would be some of the skills that would be crucial that the men would provide in their role in helping rear children. 